Now you can also listen to us on your favorite podcast with just the search, Faith Temple and Cog. Listen on the go with your favorite streaming platforms, like YouTube, Spotify, Audible, Apple, Amazon Music, Google, Facebook, and Anchor Podcasts. Thank you for listening to our Faith Temple, NFCOG, broadcast. If you would like more information about us, you can visit our website at www.ftnfcog.org. We are also on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Just type Faith Temple, NFCOG in the search. I am doing despise not prophecy. I couldn't let that one go. I did not that's that's the one I wanted, but he kept on saying do this one. So let's let you know. <laughs> and I will send the link. Before we get started. And I will send the link to the ones who need it. I know brother Jonathan. I'm going to ask Bishop if you don't mind opening it up in prayer. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We give you the glory and all the praise, Father, for you woke us up and started us on our way, Father. We just thank you for that, Father. Oh, God, we just ask you now, Lord, let the Holy Spirit have its way. Lord, teach us your word. Let your word renew our minds, Lord, and put your word in our hearts, God, that we can govern our lives accordingly, Father. Father, you know what each and every one of us need. You know how to minister each to each and every one of us. We ask you now, Lord, to do it. Do it for us, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Touch the teacher tonight. Ah, oh, my God, touch him, Lord. Let him bring and make your word plain, Father, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we ask you to touch Deacon McLean, Lord, as she's recovering from her surgery, Father. We ask you, Lord, to ease the pain, Father. Oh, Father, let her grit up, Lord, and, and renew her strength, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Continue, Lord, to touch. Continue to deliver, Father. In Jesus' name, we ask you, Father. Bless our families. Keep them, Lord. Save them, Father God. Oh, my Lord, save them, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the great time we had when you ministered to us at your convocation, Father. We thank you for your word being delivered and touching our hearts and minds, Lord. We just truly just bless your holy name. Oh, Father, let that word now minister to us, Lord. Let us seek deep in our hearts and in our spirits, Father, that we can worship you in spirit and in truth, Father. In the name of you, touch again, Lord. Make it plain to us tonight, Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for uh, Bishop Jackson's uh, uh, camp meeting, Lord, starting on Friday, Lord. We just ask you, Lord, to bless him. Let the Holy Spirit fall. Let the tent revival go forth, Father God. Let souls be delivered. Let people be healed physically and spiritually, Father. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we won't fail to give you the glory and all the praise, Father, for you are the true and living God. You are our God. We cry out to you in the spirit of adoption. We say, Abba, Abba, Father, hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you again, God. We thank you for how you brought us home. We thank you, Father God. Oh, my Lord, we just can't praise you enough. We can't worship you enough for all that you're doing. You're keeping us in good health. You're keeping us, Father, in the name of you. Provide for us, Lord. We just thank you right now. Oh, Father, bless right now, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Amen, amen. I did send the link for the ones who don't have it in the chat, so you can have a copy. Um, this lesson, um, the spies, not prophecy, and when I, I'm trying to make sure I know I seek God for everything. And last night I asked God, what lesson did you want me to do? And this popped in my mind and I said, okay. But then this morning I was like, oh, let me test Bishop, try to see, you know, the, and then he tested me something, whatever God put on your heart, I'm like, Lord, i like, okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> but this is a lesson, it's, it's an important lesson in, 
I hope when I get finished with this lesson, y'all going to have an understanding of what prophecy is and not. I think a lot of people think it's something, it's just one thing when it's more than what it is. And I want to make sure y'all can hear me on that. So I'm going to try to share the screen too with the ones who don't have a... Uh, Take your time. Option. Probably take a second for it to pull up. Okay. But the printed text, I'm going to uh, read. It says, First Thessalonians 5 and 22, it says, Despise not prophesying. Second, I mean, first Chron oh, I'm sorry, first Corinthians 14 and three it says, but he that prophesies speak unto man to edif to the edification and the exaltation and comfort. Psalms 19, 7 through 11, it says, The law of the Lord is perfect. The burning the soul, the testimony of the Lord is sure to make wise the simple. The status of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgment of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Amen. And that's what we get into why I get into the lesson. We got to understand the importance of god's word the importance of god's word because when, when we talk about you know prophesying people always want to um get a word from the lord to hear in three days god gonna do this for you and four days you turn around and god gonna bless you and all of that and i'm always a little weary when i'm around someone or uh, people who say they prophets and they always prophesying something so good that God going to bless you financially. I'm not saying that he's not going to do that, but when that's all I hear and that's all you chasing after, I I, I feel it. And this is just me. Uh, there's, a, there's a little problem with that because when you read in the Bible, the prophets and, and all that did more than just that. But the main point that I want to get into this and it starts in the snapshot view of the lesson. Yeah. And it says, the word of God, the word of God is God's will for mankind. It is only through the preaching of the gospel that one can be saved and live victoriously in Christ Jesus. Apostle Paul emphasizes and definitely declare, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jews first and also to the Greeks. This is Romans 1 and 16. Anyone who minimizes the gospel condemns that which is designed to advance their own welfare which is critical for salvation and acceptance by God. So the main thing you got to understand that it's the gospel, the word of God in that sense, that is the most important thing that you can ever have. The most important part in your life is the word of God. And, and Points of interest, and I'm not going to try to go too fast, but the points of interest say God's word is his law and will. 
God were despised and responding to God's word. Doing the three points that I'm going to try to hit on today. And one of this hit me. Closer look at the lesson. Now, I want you to really to understand this part. The word prophecy in this scripture reference means to preach, proclaim, or to declare the gospel. Peter further enlightened us to the fact that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For a prophecy came not in the old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. This is Peter 2, 1, 20 to 21. John the Baptist was inspired to preach in the wilderness of Judea, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Even Jesus, after being tipped in the wilderness by Satan and learning of John, imprisonment began to declare the word of the kingdom. This is St. Matthew 4, 12 and 17. The preaching of the gospel is necessary for the salvation of mankind and spiritual strength of the saints. And this is the main thing of prophecy because I have seen people who um, have it, I don't have a misunderstanding of what prophecy is. Every time Bishop or Mother Smith or me or somebody is proclaiming the word of God, they are speaking on God's behalf. And that's the main point of what prophecy is. When you try to find out uh, uh, what your next thing in the life or chase it off to somebody to get a word from God, you're not understanding the main point of what God's word is. When every time someone stands up to proclaim the word of God, they are prophesying to you because they are speaking God's word. I remember um, a time we was fellowshipping, not, not when I was at Faith Temple, but somewhere else we were fellowshipping at another church and, and the person preached and he preached good. He preached Jesus Christ and him crucified. And there was a person there who got upset because he didn't receive a word from the person who was preaching. And he said, well, every time you know, a prophet or somebody come in the house, they're supposed to have a word from the Lord. And they didn't prophesy to me. And I'm looking at them like, if you want a word from the Lord, just open the Bible. I'm like, if, if you want a word, period, you can get a dictionary. But if you want a word from the Lord, you can open the Bible. But his concept of what the word of God was or prophecy was the person did not come to me directly and tell me, thus says the Lord. But when he was standing in the pulpit preaching God's word, that was exactly what he was doing. But his heart and his mind was in a place that I want to get a personal word from God. And the personal word with God was to get your soul right and make sure you standing before God, right? Make sure your heart and your mind, right? Make sure that the word is in your heart so you won't sin against them. But his mindset was the man of God didn't lay hands on nobody, didn't speak to anybody, didn't prophesy to anybody. And he misunderstood um, what prophecy is. The main thing every Sunday, every Sunday, every Tuesday or Wednesday, or whoever, when you are standing before the people that you are proclaiming God's word, you are speaking on God's behalf. And that's what you have the understanding of. That's what prophecy is. And that's what God's word is. You are speaking on God's behalf. And this was the main point that people forget that they want to hear this and they want to hear this and that and you know, go lay hands on the car is yours and walk around the um, the house three times and God gonna bless you with this. And in three days, there's a check coming in the mail and all of that stuff. And I'm not saying that's not what God does, but every time someone proclaims God's word, it's God speaking directly to you. We have to 
opened up our hearts and our minds and our understanding to grab hold of it. God comes in the way. Every time you open up the Bible and you read God's word, God is proclaiming himself to you. Amen. Every time, you know, even that's um that the little things um that God is uh proclaiming to you. Um I, I remember one time when I was working, I was still driving in Norfolk and and the Holy Spirit told me, say, don't go down um, military highway, get on the interstate, go down Zaria Guy Road. And I didn't want to go down Zaria Guy Road because that was a long way. But I went that way, and then I heard on the start hearing on the radio that the traffic was backed up with the accident and all of that. No, that's God proclaiming his word to me. Now, if I'm looking for somebody, you know, big wig and, and chasing after somebody to come to church and for God to speak to me all the time, then that, that's a problem in, in my salvation and probably in, the other, in other people's salvation. If you're always looking for somebody to come and lay hands on you and have you rolling around on the floor. But every time God speaks to your heart, every time you open up the Bible, every time the pastor is standing up in the pulpit or on Zoom or whatever, speaking to you, that is God proclaiming his word to you. And that's what this is talking about when he was saying prophecy is um, God in the scripture reference, meaning to preach, proclaim, or declare the gospel. And that's what we have to have in our heart that God speak. I hear people say all the time, well, God doesn't speak to me. I don't hear God speaking to me. And their concept is because they don't, maybe don't hear the audible voice or they don't hear certain things, but God is speaking to you all the time through his word, through the leaders, and through people. I often tell people that God have another name, and this is maybe this is Lancet 101, that everybody know, and that name is something told me. I tell people that's another name for God, something told me. Something told me not to go to the store today, something told me not to do this, something told me, and it was and there was something that you know, kind of either saved their life or prevented them from doing something. And it's God speaking to us, but because we don't want to acknowledge God or we don't have the understanding of God, we say something told me. And I tell people when I hear that, I say that something told me it's God speaking. It's a, and I, so I say, and just me playing around, it's not in the Bible, but I do say that something told me it's another name for God. Because we often hear God speak, but sometimes we are so busy in our minds or busy around the world that we don't realize that God is trying to get our attention. He is trying to speak to us because he wants us to have, um, he wants to fellowship with us in our complete lives. Not just what we do maybe on Sundays or Tuesday nights or whenever, but every part of our lives, he wants to have a fellowship with us in every single part. So sometimes that something told me it is God trying to speak to your heart and speak to your mind. I want to, um, the next part says that Apostle Paul instructed the saints not to devour, let slip, or contempt, uh, disrespect, or disprove of God's word. Apparently, the saints as in the Corinthian church placed a greater value on the gift of miracles and tongues rather than hearing God's will for their lives. And we, we see that that happening now that people place certain gifts more over than the word of God. If the singing was good or if the, the praise dancing was good or the, um, you know, somebody spoke of tongues or somebody was healed, they put that more over than the preached word of God when that is God speaking to us and speaking to our hearts. And we people sometimes will cling to that or cling to a certain person more than clinging to what God's word is it because there's a certain anointing on certain people's lives. They will cling more to that person than actually clinging to God and his word because they because they they see a, a a greater value in that than trusting in God's word. It says the 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 dec, uh, declaring of the truth is the primary and the foremost function 
of the church of God. The inspired word of God should be revealed as if God was speaking directly and audibly to the congregation. It should be held in high esteem as Paul char characterized preaching as the glorious light of the gospel. In the second um, Corinthians 4 and 4, the, and Job esteemed the word of God Job esteemed the word of God's mouth more than the necessary food. That's how we should when we grab hold of to God's word. We should just try to pick out one thing or prophet so-and-so coming in town, so I'm going to go there. Or TDJ's coming here, so I'm going to go here. Or doing all that. Trying to catch a word when God is trying to speak to you and, and be in you and the word is already should be instilled in you, but you trying to run somewhere here and there and trying to catch a word and, and um, slow down a little bit. And I want to ask y'all, y'all have anything? Y'all will have to remind me if y'all want to say anything because I don't want to um, overlook anybody, you know. But I just want to make sure y'all have the understanding because I have, I've been in church my whole life. I've seen a whole lot of, of things, especially when it comes to prophesying. Or, or a prophecy, what people would think it is. But I want to be in y'all heads that you know, the, the preaching and teaching word is God's word. Is, is he speaking to your hearts and mind? That is more important because when the Bible says prophecy fail, can fail, he ain't talking about his word. He ain't talking about the uh, preach word. He ain't talking about that stuff. Because I, I realize if you don't line up to God's word, then the prophecy about the car means nothing. The all, all that other stuff, <laughs> what, is, what is profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? If you don't line your stuff up to what God wants in his word, trying to get all this material stuff, you know, it's gonna fall and it's gonna fail because you're not lining up to the whole to his word. He uh, 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 wants your soul to prosper. If your soul prosper, then you know everything else will be all right. But if your soul don't prosper, and you try to run around trying to catch this word and that word, it means nothing. You no, know, a car gonna go. I done had seven cars in my lifetime, and, I, and and probably in the future I'm gonna have some more cars. I'm trusting God for my soul. That's the main name. That's the word that I want to hear. Because when, when you go into the Old Testament, the, the prophets, they, they always uh, um, prophesy blessings. They prophesy that you need to get yourself right. What you're doing is wrong. You need to come back to God. I don't, I don't see that stuff anymore now in, in churches now when you hear prophets so-and-so coming. They don't say that all they're talking about is this and that. But they told them to get yourself right. Hezekiah, you know, get yourself straight. This, that, and that. David, you sinned against God. You did this. You did that. Get yourself right with God. And that's the proclaimed word of God. When you hear the proclaimed word of God, God is speaking to your life. And that's what prophesying is God himself speaking to you. So houses and land, we don't all have that. They're going to come and go. But where your soul is going to be at, at the end, is going to be all that matters. Because we hear, oh, I prophesied in your name. I did this all in your name. But then Jesus said, depart from me and work of nicotine because I know you not. So I, so I want y'all to have that clear understanding of that. And I know, you know, I'm talking to people who are older than me and they've been, been in God for a long time. But this is God fresh and it's, I'm talking to myself too. And in that, that we must seek God's word you must go ahead sir i just want to just touch on something while you're at this at this point you know especially in this time of day now that we live in now is everybody think uh wants to hear and it's word said in god in the latter day people gonna have a, uh people gonna have itchy ears you know they just want to hear something good they want to hear nothing bad and and most time people can uh, some people can just uh, tell 
say things just to make you feel good and say God told him to say this. God told me to speak a word into your life. And God said, but if, the only way we can know that it's truly from God, we got to know it's coming from the word of God. Because um, people can say a whole lot of things. I remember back in, uh, um, when we were back in, in the 90s, somebody prophesied somebody going to be a millionaire. You know, but the word of God said you're already rich. I give you riches according to, according to me. And, uh, and I'm not going to give you something that's going to hurt yourself. Giving some of a babe in Christ a million dollars just makes the, the person feel good at that time. And, 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 and it doesn't do any edification for God. We walk by faith. If God gave each one of us a million dollars, some of us would leave the church. And, you know, because it, it, it just, anytime people can play on people's emotions and say, uh, God said this, God said that, you got to go to the Word of God and know what God said. We, we're going to go through trials and tribulations in life. But God's Word said when you go through them, be happy, rejoice, not be complaining, not be uh, uh, sad or anything. The trying of our faith, what? Bring it for patience and virtue. And, and, so, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but we got to understand that, as you were saying, it's about the Word of God, not people coming up, let me speak a word into your life. We had a good example of that in the, uh, the youth camp where uh, the, we had the Somebody would label the prophet, and they, they, they asked questions, and the prophet said, oh, I know we're going to have a question in here today. It, it wasn't that he, he, that was just an example of how people can just play on people's emotions, or if they know somebody already, then uh, ask things about something, and they can put two and two together and prophesy, then, and they say that's from God. Go what's according to God's word. And you gotta go according to God's word, and that means you're gonna have to study the word and 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 dig dig deep in it because it's all about your salvation, not to make you feel good. When you feel good, you you're in your emotions. When you're in your emotions, you're in the cardinals, and then you're in the flesh. So it's all about your, as Elder uh, Wright is saying tonight, it's all about your spirit being fed. What does the word of God say? That's where the prophecy comes. That's why the, the, the word is, is, is preach. Uh, and, and we got we got to rightly divide and, and 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 know what the words say about everything. If it's about making you feel good, then you need to check that and and, and see why you feel, make what's making you feel good. You know, if I'm healed, uh, okay, I know I'm healed. I got the word of God that tells me I'm healed. But when you try to make me feel good, I'm gonna, uh, God gonna uh, give you this, and God gonna have a, you do, like Elder Wright said, jump up through four times and run around the church, and God gonna do something. God, I, I hope y'all understand what I'm trying, trying to just, you gotta have the Word of God, because people will deceive you and say things and make you feel good. And, and, and when you're feeling good and it's not doing your spirit any good, you, you're rejoicing in your heart all the time. That's what we should be doing all the time. There shouldn't be no sadness or, or it's, it's going to be a season of that, but you shouldn't be always sad. The Word of God tells us to rejoice. Rejoice always. Yeah. And, and, and know that God is in control and everything will be all right. I, that's all, Elder. Amen. Uh, I saw you talking, Mother. Did you have something, Mother? I was just agreeing with Bishop that, you know, some of the words from the Lord can be manipulation. It could be self-serving for whoever's, some people call it proper lying. <laughs> <laughs> This is a serious thing. As you were saying, Elder, ultimately it's our eternal souls that matter. So if we know God blesses us, we know God is good, we can trust him, he's faithful, all of those things. We don't need anybody to come to tell us 
that something that God's going to do necessarily, unless somehow, if, and of course the Lord can do that. But what I'm saying like, is in reinforcing what you said, that if you're running around looking for someone to say something, it's almost like um, fortune telling, that you are looking for someone to offer side your future and all of those things. And that's not really what it's about. It's the word of God by which we live it's the word of God that has everything we need to know in it. So if someone has something to share with you from the Lord, it has to be. If it's really a prophecy, that's system with God's word. I know y'all have said that before. Yeah, and I want to, I'm not going to turn to it, but there'll be a whole nother lesson in another time. But Jeremiah, the whole 29th chapter, I know we get excited about the middle of it when we said that in, um, we were saying that the, uh, um, thoughts. yeah, I know your thoughts and all of that. We get excited about that part, but you need to read that whole chapter. That's right. That's right. Because the, the main part, the purpose of that chapter was they was in bondage because they did not do what God called them, told them to do. And the prophets at that time was telling them, you know, God going to bring you out. God is going to deliver you. Don't worry. They wasn't marrying people. They wasn't having families. They wasn't building houses because they believed that God was about to bring them out of their situation. They were shouting all and giving God glory because the prophet saying that God was about to bring you out. And then he sent Jeremiah and said, go tell them not so that you're going to be in here for the long haul. Go ahead, get married. Go ahead, have children. Go ahead and build houses there because you're going to be planted there for a while. And the prophets there was lying to the people, telling them that God was about to bring them out. God was about to do this in their lives and that in their lives. And God was saying, not so. Because of your disobedience, you are going to be here for a while. Now, I know the dots that I have towards you, the dots of good and evil, and then to expect the end. But right now, you're going to be in here for the long haul because of your disobedience. So when you driving around trying to find a word, every single word that comes from somebody is not from God. The God already had warned them. He already told them, if you be my people, I will be your God. But if you separate yourself from me, then I'm going to put you into captivity. So this was a time that they was in captivity. And they and they were just sitting there waiting for God to bless God. But we, I'm in captivity, but I know in three days God going to bring me out. And I'm shouting and I'm dancing. And the prophet done told me God about to deliver me. And I, woo, yes, thank you, God. And God had to send Jeremiah and said, no, let these people know that they're going to be in here for at least 70 years. That's right. They're going to be in lockdown for, for that time. You, you can pray God all you want to, but you ain't coming out of this. Not right now, because I got to do what I say. If I go back on my word, I'm God. I mean, I'm a, I, I'm a liar, and God don't lie. So these the prophets, the prophet lions, was going around telling people that God about to deliver them, and they said, okay, I'm going to have my family. I'm a, I've got my house ready when I get out of there. And God said, no. Nah. Go ahead, establish your family right here because this is where you're going to be at. You're going to be here in the long haul. So that's the whole um, 29th chapter of Jeremiah. I know we always quote them, them scriptures, uh, verse uh, 11 through, I think, 13. We always quote them scriptures. God, you know, I know that that's towards you. That's a good and evil. That sound all good. But before then and after that, you know, you got to put that whole thing together. So that's why you got to understand it. I think Mother Smith said something. When you're going around trying to look for a word, I, I have in my experiences, and then everybody's not that like that, but in my experiences, when somebody has spoken to me a, a word of prophecy, it was always a, a confirmation or something that um, you know, was on my mind or it gave me a clearer understanding of what God wanted to do in my life. That, that, that's just my experience. I'm not saying everybody's like that. But I'm not running around trying to look for... <laughs> A word of blessing. I do remember years ago, I was at somebody's church in offering time. I thought there's something about offering time and people always want to give a word from God. <laughs> and the, the guy was like, yo, come on, shake the prophet hand and all that. And I was just going to put my offering in. And I, I won't go shake the man's hand, but you know, we try to 
I'm, I'm a little stubborn, if y'all don't know. But no, but um, no, went to the man's hand and he shook my hand like, mm, somebody owe you some money. And I looked at him and I said, don't nobody owe me any money. I said that out loud. That's just that's, that's how I am. That's how I get in trouble a lot. But I, I, I told, I told him, middle of the service, you should not, don't nobody owe me. I said, if I gave anybody any money, it was because of the kind of my heart and I did not expect for them to pay me back. But don't nobody owe me any money. And he looked like, oh, okay. Now I say, God gonna bless me. He's gonna bless me. But that, but during orphan time, I'm trying to put my offering that God told me to put it in there. And now you're shaking my head that I'm God gonna somebody owe me money and look for a check in the mail. You know, like, and I'm like, don't nobody owe me money. I, I told him, I said, don't nobody owe me money. I owe some people money, but don't nobody owe me money. But that's, but. You know, when your mindset is, oh, the prophet is coming to give you a word from the God, and everybody else before me, he's shaking and yes, yes, and I'm just, y'all pray for me. But, you know, my mindset is totally different because I believe that God is going to bless me. I don't need you to tell me somebody owe me money for God to bless me. That just that's just me. I'm, I ain't trying to start nothing with y'all, but that's just me. And I just, and, and there's something irritates me. When it's offering time and the offering is sometimes longer than the person who preached the God, who preached the word. And we got a hundred dollar line here. If I, I'm I'm going to it, let me get back to focus. But it just, you know, but people go to church for that. They go to church just to see if somebody gonna prophesy a word to them. And it's like mother said, sometimes that's just fortune, that's a uh, 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 sorcery in a sense. They they take what the gift that God has placed. And they try to and they make it sorcery and it's in the church sometimes because people are you paying somebody to prophesy to you. Let's shake the man. All right. Okay, let, let's go to the next part. I'm gonna leave that alone. Um I don't want nobody. All right, the next part is uh, uh that's what we were just got finished saying. Prophecy. It says uh prophecy also means to bedit and foretell, which is nothing wrong with that. That, that's the uh, that's the part that everybody um, grab hold to. There's nothing wrong with that part of the future events under the anointing and the unction of the Holy Ghost. Okay, I'm gonna read that again. To prophesy also means the prediction and the foretelling of the future of future events under the anointing and the unction of the Holy Ghost. God used individuals in the in biblical time to tell what happened, what will happen hundreds of years in advance to strengthen and encourage his people, letting them know that God was with them. I'm just I'm pausing for I'm pausing for a reason. I ain't lost the words. Letting them know that their God was with them. And had not forgotten about them. It's Isaiah 9 and 6, 9, 6 through 7, and 53, 1 through 5. And I actually want to read Isaiah 53, 1 through 5. And it says, Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form of comeliness, and when we shall see him, there shall there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of man, a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief, and we hid as it was our face from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him strictly, smitten of God and afflicted. But, but he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we were healed. That's the point of all of that. When they prophesied, it was to tell the future and to give God glory. 
to prepare us for what God want us to do in his work and ministry. The cars and the houses and all of that, that's just a, God promised them that I would give you houses that you didn't build. He, he told them that I, I do this and I do that for you. So, so it is so today God's servants are yet in the process of giving God's people advance notice as to what he has in store for them. However, God chose, however God choose to express himself through the proclamation of the word of God or foretelling of the future, tr a truth should not be the drain as it pricks the heart of the ungenerate and enrich our lives of the believer. That's the point. Even if you get know that 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 guy has something to tell me, it should line up in his word. It should line up for what God has in store for you to help out others. Even if God said he's going to bless you with a million dollars, what are you going to do with that million dollars? What's the purpose of God giving you a million dollars? There should be something in it. God, God, you bless me with this. Now, what's the purpose of it? What do you want me to do with it? Is it for me to uh, spend it on a whole bunch of stuff and I see somebody who need help and not to give it to them? That that desire in um choosing um choosing. I'm sorry, I heard an echo. I'm sorry, I heard an echo. That's what God That's wants what... to do in our lives. To go forth in him. So when he does give us a word of prediction or foretelling, it's for his benefit. And also ours for his will that we go forth and do what God has called us to do. The next the next part is anyone have anything to say? I don't never want to cut anybody off. All right. The next part is um A. And it says God's word is his law and will and uh i'm asking mother do you mind helping me helping me out and read this for me mother smell you don't mind sorry it took me a minute to unmute <laughs> god's word is his law and will it has been established previously that god is sovereign and has the exclusive right to do as he chooses this was clearly seen when the children of Israel were delivered from Egypt and began their trek through the wilderness. Government was established by the giving of the Ten Commandments and a multitude of other laws that regulated their lives. That's Exodus 20. God held firm to what he mandated for his people as the law was a ministration of death to Second Corinthians. Three, seven. There was indeed righteousness in the law if it was obeyed. However, disobedience resulted in death. The fact remains, God's love, provision, and salvation was expressed through obedience to his word. Thank you, Mother, for that part. So this, this is saying that God already had a plan in motion. And when he talks about the law was a ministry of death, that he already planned that someone had to die for our mistake. And he already had it in motion, even when they was in the wilderness, even if you go back into Genesis when they Adam and Eve first said that excuse me, that he already had something in motion for this. And we had the Ten Commandments. And the other laws that regarded their lives, God held firm. I'm sorry. <clears throat> God held firm to that. And there was indeed righteousness of the law. So God had this already planned, his will and all of that was already planned for us. We are just there and we're gonna um God gonna use us, but it's already established through what he wants us to do. Do you yeah, have a, a understanding of that? 
Uh, go ahead, Mother, with the next part. We are blessed to be living in the dispensation of grace. God is merciful and long-suffering, extending a period of time that many might be saved and come to know him. 2 Peter 9. Regardless of this truth, we are reminded by James to do what the word tells us. If not, we only deceive ourselves. James 1.22. He further instructs, Whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed indeed. James 1 25. <coughs> it says the word, doer of the word. We continue to see God. Should I continue? Elder. I think he getting something, something yes, ma'am. What did he say? Yes, yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah. um, we continue to see God in the grace age commanding his will through wise counsel given to Timothy. And from a child thou hast known the holy <clears throat> which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Jesus Christ. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. 2 Timothy 3, 15 through 16. It is by obedience to the law and will of God, the preaching of the gospel, that we can expect and experience the blessings of God. If I could comment some on some of that, um, Elder. Yes, ma'am. The whole point is God has a plan and a purpose. And what is happening when we are aligned with him and saved by grace through faith in him is that what's happening in our lives is for the furtherance of the gospel, as you have already related, and for the ultimate goal of our spending eternity with him. But if we're not thinking as God thinks, and that's the carnal mind that Bishop reminds us so much about. That carnal mind puts us at the in the middle. We're the focal point. It's all about us. But when we are all knowing that our lives are all about Jesus Christ, then it's the word of God that we are rooted and grounded in and living by and surviving by and ultimately reaching eternity with Christ through. So that takes away that desire if we are thinking correctly, just focus so much on what's in it for me. Mm. What is somebody going to say that is going to be in my ears? Is this, what's the thing? Because it's not really about our agenda, it's about God's agenda and his purpose and plan for mankind. And thank God that we are saved by grace through faith and we are now belong to him. And it's our role to win as many others as we possibly can. To the same knowledge right so we realize that that the focus the, the center of it all there's the song that says jesus is the center of it all is jesus Christ. yes ma'am can, can i make a comment yes sir yes sir okay uh, as we're talking about the will of god in that first uh, scripture it said that on the front page says psalm 19 7 through 11 and the first one is said, the Lord, the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. And, and I thought about that and how God, his will and his uh, and everything that he has orchestrated up to this point and what, whatever, we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, but God does. But how he just used one man and, and, uh, and people take this scripture lightly, though. They don't really see this effect of it now because then I heard it so much he was a uh, repent and, 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 and be baptized you know people don't even look to be baptized more they don't even look to be uh repentant they just want to I'm saved never changing their ways no more and the word of God said you can't take it the teacher said we can't just can't let it slip we can't let it just be washed down or or, or just go on to the side it's it's got to be that, repent and be baptized 
uh, means something to God. He put it in His Word, and it's to orchestrate our lives in according to His will. Uh, that's one of the laws that 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 we, yet we live in grace, but we gotta fulfill the Word of God. We gotta repent of our ways. We gotta change our ways. Uh, John talks about being born again. These are all prophesied that, that, that because it is the Word of God. That's why we, he gave us preachers, prophets, evangelists, uh, apostles, and teachers for, for the perfecting of the saints. And, and we have to get this word and know that God is in control. He has orchestrated everything, I'm going to say it in my life, and I believe this, everything in my life to get me to this point where I trust God for everything. He is my God. He's my Father. And, and He's never going to leave me nor forsake me. And I trust that word. And I get up in the morning and I go through the day. I make mistakes and I repent. Then, because I, I know that's one of the key things. I got to be, I'm never too good uh, in myself uh, to not repent. It's a repentive state that we have to find ourselves in. Uh, I know we don't discuss that in it. But one of the things said uh, that we in, in the uh, second uh I mean, first Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, in, in the verse 22, he says, abstain from all appearance of evil. I mean, that, that incorporates a lot, but that's God's will. That's God's word. So we got to line up, not just with this word, but all the chapters in, in the words of God. in Because we just said, all the scripture is given by the inspiration of God. We can't pick out this one and that one and this one and that one. And say, I, I'm going to live according to this. I'm going to be good. I'm gonna, our goodness is nothing. But Paul said, it's filthy bad. But we got to line up with the word. And, and stop trying to make somebody feel or justify uh, you uh, living in the, according to the world. And not according to the scripture, the word of God. God is in control. It is his will that mankind be saved. And I, I just can't. It just, it's, it's just so... We just got to line up with his word and know that God is in control. And no matter what we go through, God's going to bring us out. And that's that. you can prophesy that. that that's, a, that's not something I'm predicting. I'm telling you what's it, what is it, mm -hmm. he does naturally. Naturally he does that. And this is, I can testify I'm living my best life. In Jesus Christ, is the best life I've ever had, ever could hope to have. There's a scripture that says, there's a way that seems right to man, but the end thereof is death. And when that is the consequence of sin, the wages of sin is death. But there is life and life abundantly in Jesus Christ. So there is also who said, the joy bells are ringing in my soul. So obeying God is not, I guess cinema and some of them look at it as, this hard task. I'm going to be walking around with my head hung down like a monk or something. And that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a life that's committed to Christ. And in that commitment, he is the source of everything we need. It, there's no, like you said, Bishop, trusting God because we can trust him. He's never failed. And I, must, I think of my sister when she said, and then, oh no, she didn't like saying still does something. She said that implies that somehow he might not do it somehow in the future. So when people said he's never failed me yet, he never will fail you. There's no yet about it. But what we have to come to, to as we walk, and it takes some maturing in God, is to realize his goodness, his faithfulness, his purpose, his plan is good. So that's why that scripture that, that uh, Elder was talking about, his thoughts for us are good and not for evil to bring us to an expected end. Whatever is happening, some of those things which in the natural are not things that we find pleasurable. You know, for instance, I can use the example of Paul's passing. I was blessed with a long marriage. But when it was time for that to end, God brought it to an end. But my life goes on because he has a plan for me beyond that good marriage. He's showing himself That's right, mother. more and more in my life. I know him even better. 
I thank God for Pastor Paul. He was a living epistle if ever there was one. And there are many. I don't mean to suggest there are others. So I may be rambling a bit, but I don't want people to get the idea that there's this laborious, oh, well, I just got to obey God. Well, obey God is, brings you to that expected thing, which is good, and gives you a life as he promised that he came for. To give you life and that more abundantly, because the end of sin is death, no doubt about it. I know <laughs> the pleasure of sin for a season, <laughs> that's just what it was. There was always something behind that sin that ended up doing good. And, 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 uh, yes. I'm sorry, I see Brother Jonathan Hand, so I wanted to give him an opportunity. <laughs> You got to win. Mother and Bishop get to going. You just got to jump in. <laughs> I'm, I'm still respectful. I, I will wait and I will give honor what honors do. So I'm never going to jump in. I'm going to put my hand up and if I get called, I get called. If not, then say, that's okay. It'll be my time next time. But all I want to say was this. One of the things uh, um, I heard talking about prophesying, I remember the thing with Jeremiah 29, 14. That's one of my favorite scriptures. And the thing, you know, Jeremiah was going through, everybody was going through, he just wanted to encourage the people. And I, and one of the best ways to understand prophecy to, in my world is just, this a scripture in Timothy. I'm just going by, by, by my memory. And it goes, study, study to show thyself approved unto God, a word that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the, um, the, word, the word of God or, or truth. And the thing, I went to a conference one time and I heard this, this speaker is called Million Man March, and he kept saying all these things. And he's and he wasn't a Christian, didn't believe in the Bible. He believed in the Quran, but he, his thing was, he says, "Yo, it's your word it says, tell you the truth. You know, you should be free. Um, you know, if, you know, um, the truth shall, shall set you free, or the truth shall make you free. But the thing about that is that when you know the word of God and you know it from from your heart, you know it's not somebody telling you." It sets you free by telling you what they think the truth is. The truth is God's word. The truth, and as long as you know God's word, then you're able to do the thing that God wants you to do, which is basically to encourage the people. And if you don't know, then you'll get, when the, the enemy will give you something, as you say, proper lying, give you just enough of the truth to try to convince you. I can go all the way back to Genesis, all the way back to Eve. And when Adam said, you're not, and, and Adam told Eve, he said, you cannot eat of the tree of good and evil. And then the enemy went to her and said, did you ever hear him say that? He didn't surely say that, now did he? And so sometimes you just got to know enough of God's word on the inside. And that way, when you get something, when people are going to prophesy something to you, your, your spirit's able to receive it, and then you're able to grow in what they have, what they have, have, um, have to share. And, and like I said, um, I'm working right now, and I'm, but God just led me to say Tune into Bible study tonight. And so that, you know, so that's what I do. You know, I can either be resting right now, but God wanted me to hear something that's gonna encourage me tonight. And I just want to thank everybody for just being obedient. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. Yeah, and I, I know, go ahead, Bishop. Now, this is my last comment. I'm not my last, but this is I'm gonna keep you real short. I was uh outside today uh, doing some yard work and I was saying Lord you know this ain't this is just I'm getting too old for this and the spirit quickly you know put that little murmur and complaining that was that, that's what it's called I'm getting too old for this but God knows and God said the spirit said now if you're not able to you're sitting in the house what would be happening to your body and I said man I, I'll be all right I rest you know, just having a, but it, it came to say that because you're out here doing this, you're exercising your body and you're doing things that keep your body moving and we're strengthening your legs and strengthening your arms so that you're, you're in the process of you know, re rebounding or coming yeah. back. And so I hadn't be, I had, we got just those little simple, little small things where you really didn't, don't think you're complaining, but you really are complaining, but the Holy Spirit will bring it back to you that God's got a plan, this way I put it, and continue to work this plan, you need to do what I tell you to do, 
and then you'll be all right. So we just got to know that God is in control. He's sovereign. And no matter what we find our situation in, the Word of God will strengthen us and, 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 and encourage us. Uh, and, and like you said, we don't have to have nobody saying, well, Lord, say you're going to uh, uh, do this and in three days this is going to be turning this going No, I just going to... God is sovereign. His word is 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 is, is for me, and is and is is been, been given by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, and that this word would cause the simple to be wise, and it, it just reveals so much in His word. So, just say truly, we know that God is sovereign, and as we study the will of God, uh, <laughs> it's just it, it makes this thing so much easier to me. When I really know that God is in control and how God's doing it, and He's doing it. And I'm learning every day that that uh, just stay in His will, seek His face. Amen, sir. And uh, I'm looking at the time. I'm trying to see because I can keep on going, or we can I can pick up next week. <laughs> and we just got to be. Which is God word despised, which is a whole nother um thing of itself. So all what do right. you, you want to do, sir? Well if you, it's up to uh, we gonna stop it from here then. Uh it just so we got to now. Don't forget everybody that uh Elder Wright graduates this year with his BA in uh, I guess in theology. Uh, it's going to be done it's this Saturday uh, morning uh, in Kelowna Beach. Uh, and at River Life Bishop Scotty Jackson Church, the ceremony is going to be down there at Bishop Jackson's church. Amen. I think it's at 11 o'clock. Everybody enjoyed the convocation. I, I hope everybody got blessed by the Word of God. Uh, I, I was blessed. I, I, you know, Got some things off my mind. Got some things. I turn it over to God, and God is going to work it out. Everything is, uh, is good. And I just hope everybody is have, was blessed at the convocation. Apart with that, yeah, uh, go. go ahead, Elder. Oh, no, I was saying with that, we we're going to continue to keep them in prayer. We're going to pray for everybody. And that. But go ahead, sir, before we pray, that you have something to say. No, I didn't. Oh, if that our hearts and minds are clear. Father God in heaven, we thank you again, Father, for your word that you have presented before us. Father, we ask you to touch your people right now. Father, we know you as a healer. We know you as a deliverer. But most of all, we know you as a soul savior. Father, we ask you to touch Brother Herb. Continue to touch his mind. God, strengthen him right now, Father. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. We bless you, God, for what you are going to do in his life. God, we ask you right now to touch, continue to touch Dick and Tracy, Father. Oh, God, as she's there in the hospital, God, move upon her right now, Father. Continue to strip to her, Father, in the name of Jesus, God. We ask you right now to touch, oh, God, your people that are called by your name, Father. We thank you. We bless you. We honor you, God, for it. God, we thank you for what you are doing in faith to our lives, Father. We thank you, oh, God, for the strength and the bond that you have placed before us, Father. We ask you right now, God, to continue to strengthen the bishop in his body, oh, God, that the work that you have for him to do physically and spiritually, Father. We ask you to touch him, oh, God, for the word that he you have for him this spring unto your people, O oh God, on Saturday night, Father. We ask you to breathe upon us, O oh, Holy Father. We thank you for saving our families, God. We thank you for your blood, O oh God. We thank you for your spoken word that you have spoke before us, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we honor you. We thank you, God, that you are the true and living God, and what you say will come to pass. And we bless you. We honor you. Hi, ah, God, we give you glory, Father. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, oh God, for everyone under the sound of my voice, God, and everything that they are connected to, God, that you move upon them now, Father. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, God. We glorify you, we honor you, and we magnify you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Everybody, amen. You too, Bishop. Don't worry, everyone. Yeah.